Hello, good day. Welcome to Simplifying the Christian Experience with Josiah Emmanuel Adeiza. Now, on today's video, we're going to be talking about the real truth why you can't give up masturbation, pornography, and probably any other um, addictions. And um, I'll be relaying to this message in a story format and forgive me for the places I'll be using you instead of we because I'm trying to make this as personal as, as possible for you and, yes. and any other person. So just bear with me. So um, a while back I was praying and I was talking with the Lord and I was telling him, I said, Lord, take this habit away. I don't like it. I don't want to engage it again. I, I, I really given, I've really given it up, I've really given it up over and over again, but it's not going and I don't know, probably you're not answering my prayer, so probably I don't know what I've been doing wrong because I've fasted, I've prayed, I've cried, I've read books, I've made confessions and then indeed there was a time I was free, but now I'm back to this thing again, so help me Lord. And he told me something, he said, he said, Emmanuel, I have not taken these addictions away, not because I couldn't take them, but because you've not given, given it to me. And I was asking, I said, Lord, I've not given this to you. I mean, I've, I've prayed, I've, uh, and I mean to protracted periods of prayer, long period of prayers, you know, fastings and even confessions. And he was telling me, he said, I can't take them away because you've really not given them. And I was there arguing with the Lord, like, no, I've given them, like, I don't know, probably. And he was just, you know, one thing I've noticed, when you're talking with the Lord, he's very so, so royal, so regal in his, in his disposition. He just stays, he's not arguing with you. You can raise your voice all he, you like, but he's just there, calm, resolute, and direct. So he was telling me, you know, after that time, he said, you've not given it up because it's your best friend and you know that i was rattled it alarmed me like my best friend this habit that i so hated I, I'm, I'm disgusted by you know it irritates me sometimes many times even after engaging it i almost feel like throwing up because i'm i'm irritated with myself i feel so dirty and you are calling this thing my best friend i said no it's not my best friend and he said really you haven't given it up not because you've not prayed not because you've not fasted but because it's your best friend you've given it up in your mind you've given it up in your mouth you've given it up in prayers but you've not given it up in your heart and the reason why you've not given it up in your heart is because it's your best friend then i was still arguing with the lord and he said okay calm down let me tell you a few things to show you that you've not given this thing up because you've not given it up in your heart and because it's your best friend so he started talking to me and he asked he said he said um when when you are angry maybe someone annoyed you someone agitated you you feel aggravated and there is no way to vent there is no one to pour out to there's no one to hear you out and you are just loaded or boiling up with anger inside and maybe you just you just go back home or you you, you retire to your place he you say who do you pour out to who do you go to for comfort who do you go to for succor who do you go to for closure who hears the finality of that experience and makes you feel better you know i searched i searched and True to the truth to the word, it's not a person. It was masturbation, it was pornography because I could remember times where I'll be angry, I'll be offended, and I'll be challenged, and, and there's nobody to pour out to you know. You can really be surrounded with a lot of people and still be lonely. It's a sad reality. You can even be surrounded by supposed loved ones and you are still lonely. So I, I check most of those times I'm angry. There's no one to talk to because people can't even listen to you. And even the ones who pretend to listen, don't listen with depth to help you get to the issue or to help help bring you healing, to help bring you closure, to help bring you um, <coughs> succor. So most times, I, for me, I, I relate back to masturbation. So he asked me, he said, um, what about the times where you feel depressed, you feel sad, and anxiety is welling up inside you? Who do you pour to? Who do you go to for relief? Who do you go to for comfort? Who do you go to for succor? Who do you go to for embrace? And I search, and to be truthful, it's not been a person again. And I said, Lord, I go to masturbation, I go to pornography. Then he asked, he said, what about those moments where probably because you, um, you, you, you feel discouraged, you, you tend to become lazy, you tend to become slothful, or even yield to idleness. He said, and when that righteous voice of productivity within you is crying and is challenging you to do better, is challenging you for productivity, and altogether you're not feeling bad, you're not feeling sad, you're not feeling, you know, you're just feeling useless. He said, who do you take all those things to? Who do you relate it to? 
and I searched my heart. And the answer was still masturbation and pornography. Then he told me, he said, do you now agree this thing is your best friend? I said, Lord, no, I agree that I go to it quite often than I, than I would like to admit, but this thing is not my best friend. Then he told me, he said, what about those moments where of those moments of high accomplishment, those moments where you do you, you perform tasks to fineness, to perfection, those moments where you achieve certain things and you want to celebrate it with people, you want people to celebrate you, you want people to see your work, you want them to commend you for the things you've done. By the way, I hope you know approval is not a bad thing. Approval is a bad thing when you tend to gain get your identity from approval. But when you do things and you know you want people to tell you how well you've done or you want them to commend you, you want them to evaluate your process, it's not a bad thing. So he was telling me he said those moments when you accomplish much and you want people to celebrate you but rather than celebrating you rather than rejoicing with you they tend to vilify your accomplishments they don't they tend to um see it as something that is not worth celebrating you know they just throw it down they just feel like it's ordinary they make you feel like you've not done anything significant and you know that broken spirit you just go back with that broken spirit to, to your room and you know you are feeling sad you of course you accomplish something great but you know because of the reception of um, people's and the reception and people's perception of what means so much to you you are back there and you are feeling down again even though on some levels on some level in your inside you are happy but still because of the reception because of people's reception you are feeling down and he said who do you go to with all these things who do you talk to who do you engage who who hugs you who embraces you who makes you feel like it's okay who is that friend that tells you don't worry it's fine who is that friend that boosts your mood that elates you that gives you that elation you know that rejuvenates you and i checked and over truth it was still masturbation and pornography then he told me he said do you agree this thing is your best friend and finally i was slowly beginning to see then he told me he said what about your childhood what about all the expectations you didn't get realized as a, as a child the needs you didn't get met you know especially um as a child i always wanted a bicycle and i i think i i, I did well i improved my studies <coughs> to get a bicycle but you know, I, I didn't eventually get, get it. And psychologists will tell you that expectations like these, field expectations like this, have a way of impacting your adulthood, negatively impacting your adulthood. And he was telling me many other things, the abuses I suffered, the lack, the poverty, the deprivations, the rejections and everything. And now that I'm, I'm an adult, that sometimes these things tend to resurrect and kind of weigh me down. He said, when you feel those feelings, who do you go to? Who do you retire you who do you retire to who hears you out and i i, I admitted again i said lord there has there has really been nobody probably because i've been I've, i'm away too secretive or probably because of trust issues or probably because you know in this christian faith once you stand up for god everybody wants this everybody wants to be perceived as a champion you don't want to let people know you are aching you don't want to let people know you are breaking so i just told him i said the only thing i've, I've, I've fallen back to over the years is masturbation is and his pornography and he told me he said now do you agree this thing is your best friend and for the first time i could wow. see it it really was my best friend and it was the reason why i couldn't give up masturbation it was the reason why i couldn't give up pornography i've given it up in my mind i've given it up in my speech i've given it up, given it up in prayers i've given it up in fasting but i couldn't release it to the lord you know like abraham releasing isaac i couldn't release it to the lord because it really was my best friend to me it really was something of value and the lord was telling me he said let me ask you a question if you have a friend that is always there for you in times of need you have a friend that always hears you out that always comforts you that friend that is never tired of giving you that comfort hug you need no matter how long you need it you know that friend that's always providing you succor that's always pacifying you that's always making you feel elated always making you feel you know that emotional high you need to go through life and you have another friend that, is, that isn't so responsive doesn't attend to you much doesn't care about you and he told me he said which of these friends would you engage the most and i told him i said the first friend and he told me he said among these two friends which one would you like him to be your best friend and i said the best friend and he, uh, the first one and he said this is exactly who pornography and masturbation represents to you and for those who are not who are not struggling with pornography or masturbation but who are struggling with substance with drugs with alcohol or stuff it's still the same for you you keep falling back to these things because this these addictions are the only one true friends you have they are the friends that never leave you know <clears throat> they are your go-to place for comfort your go-to place for relief your go-to place for alleviation for alleviating sadness for escapism you know they are your best friends and you know one of the powerful things about this thing is that about addictions being your best friend is that 
they are always there when you need them. They never tell you no. I do Sean as a best friend will never tell you no. You know, always going back to it, always really relenting back to it. It will always welcome you to always it's it's ever present and ever ready to help you. It's always ready for engage. You will never go to addictions and addictions will tell you, no, I'm tired today. Come back tomorrow. Please let's talk like that. You know, it's always there. So this kind of response it gives to us, this ever present response makes us latch onto it and we become um Bond with it. So the Lord was telling me, he said, the reason why you've not given these things up is because it's your best friend. And for the first time I could see it, you know, and finally when I accepted it, the Lord was telling me, he said, this is also the reason why the fellowship with the Holy Spirit you've been yearning for, that relationship with God, that personal relationship, you know, having a tangible manifestation of the presence of the Holy Spirit, Him accompanying you as your friend. This is also why it does not happen because God does not play second fiddle to anyone. He doesn't play second fiddle to any system. When He comes here, He wants to be the center. He wants to be the first. He wants to be the last. He wants to be the beginning end. But when you already have masturbation, you already have pornography you already have these addictions as your arrows paracletus you know the holy spirit doesn't have any work to do again he's a wise spirit he just judges like you have no need for me but adventure what you are doing is just religious or just on the mental level it hasn't gotten into your heart and the lord was telling me said the reason why you've prayed and you've cried for the presence of the holy spirit for the fellowship for friendship with god and you've not really gotten into you know like brother lawrence is because you already have a very good best friend you are holding on to and that best friend is masturbation and pornography and that's also the reason why you can't let it go you know imagine having a friend that is always there for you in this lonely world in this wicked world and you are giving up that friend how would you do that you know and it's not like there is any guarantee that when you give up these best friends called addictions people will now start being there for you no you can really give them up and still experience loneliness you can really give them up and still exp experience sadness you still experience disconnection so who would want to give that up so you know the Lord helped me see and you know he brought this scripture to mind in Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 where he said the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked above all else who can know it but I the Lord search the heart I tried the reins and in um, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 he said the word of God is quicker and sharper at it than any, any two-edged sword and is a discerner of the thoughts and of the intents of the heart of men. So it helped me see it. So um, I'll share with you a scripture and it's in Isaiah chapter 57 verse 17 and 18. And you know, you do, the Lord concerning the children of Israel after evaluating them for a while, he said, I've seen that the, the issue of these people is not sin and righteousness. The, the, the issue of these people is not rebellion and reconnection. The issue with these people is not, is not, is not, um, um, loyalty and disloyalty. I've seen that these people are really sick for their disobedience, for their unrighteousness, for their rebellion. I was wroth, I was angry, I was agitated. But now I've examined deep to the matter and I've seen that these people they are not just it's not just that they are rebellious or they are they are sinful or they are daring, but they are sick. And I, my I, the Lord, will heal them. I will bring them healing, and I will even go for them and proclaim peace, peace unto them. And the Lord is saying the same thing to you today. He said, "I've seen, dear brother, dear sister, dear viewer. I've seen, I've seen what you're struggling with. I've seen your jittering. I've seen your oscillations between righteousness and and and." sinfulness i've seen your dream between rising up and falling down and i've concluded that this thing is not even a matter it's not a sinful fault it's a sickness really and i'm stretching forth my hand to heal you still therefore i'm praying for you today just stretch forth your hands to your strength if you believe and i'll i'll pray for you and i pray that in the name of jesus i decree that whatever addiction whatever whatever substance whatever habit you're struggling with that has been your best friend that has been a pain to you experiencing the presence of the lord i decree that in the name of jesus you renounce them in the name of jesus i decree that they lose their grip from you in jesus name i also pray that the courage the determination it takes to deny masturbation friendship to deny pornography friendship to deny any substance addiction friendship and be joined genuinely with the holy spirit i decree that that grace be supplied unto you in the name of jesus i decree for those who have prayed who have cried who even at the point of watching this video are still crying for help and begging for help i decree in the name of jesus that the lord heal you of your sicknesses in the name of jesus that the lord heal you of the sickness called addiction that the lord heals your mind the lord heals your heart the lord heals your emotion in the name of jesus i pray and i decree upon you that from today henceforth you will begin seeing results you begin seeing changes you begin seeing improvements and i decree the courage 
once again the courage to deny additions friendship that will be granted unto you and i decree that your healing be permanent and your healing last long last long in the name of jesus amen so thank you so much thank you if you enjoyed this video please subscribe for more videos like this this is what i do this is what this channel is all about your sexuality your mental health and your emotions if you enjoyed this video please like it comment and also share this video on your facebook your whatsapp your social media handles you don't know you you might be it might be the reference point to someone else's victory you know there are people struggling you can't tell but you know just putting this thing out there and for them seeing you know they'll know they'll know that could be the, the connecting factor to the America. So please, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really like for you to subscribe. I'd really like for you to share. Let others get to enjoy what you've enjoyed and let them get to be delivered. So until we meet again, thank you. I still remember Josiah Emanuela Teresa. I value you and I cherish you so much.